Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a paver walkway. I'm going to take you through, show you step by step on how I do it. So hopefully you can tackle this job at home. Save yourself some money with great results. If you enjoy the video, just click on that red subscribe button right there in the right hand corner. Alright, let's get at it. you guys got pavers that look like this so the three main reasons that why pavers why patio stones go this way is because no edging and no compaction so they were just pretty much dug the sod up placed them down hoping for the best and this is what happens they uh, they split apart they sink without the right material so here we are ripping up all those patio pavers we're going to rip them up and redo it. I like to dig down, digging it up here, I like to dig down about 6-7 inches, about the depth of your shovel. Just take it down to, you'll be able to tell once you, uh, once you dig all that topsoil off, you'll be able to tell when you hit that good compact ground. It's uh, yeah, like I say, about six inches, take all that topsoil off, get down to, uh, to a harder ground. And here's how you can test uh, for compaction for, for that ground is I usually just take like a 12 inch spike. And if you have to hammer, hammer that spike down into that ground, you can't push it down by hand. You got to pretty much hammer it with that little sledge. You know you're good to go. So like I say, yeah, every ground's different, but I usually go about six inches, six, seven inches. Now I lay this crusher dust down. It's it's like an angular crusher stone. It, it jams together, bites together good. It's not like a pea stone. Pea stone won't pack for you. So you got to use this good angular crusher dust. Some guys use three quarter minus for a garage pad. That's probably good. But where this is just a walkway, I'm going to go with a crusher dust. It uh, it still takes a good bite. I'm going to put the string line down. And what this does for me is I'll follow that string line along that walkway and and see where I got to bring up that crusher dust just to, to make it more even the whole way across so so I got a good even good even base of crusher dust before I start compacting I usually I usually make that about four four and a half inches thick because when I always water it down before I come back to water it down you get a better compaction and uh, usually sinks about a half an inch or more so I just kind of screed it with this two by four just to take in all the indents one last final touch before I compact it just to, just to fill in the low spots and the divots. Does a good job. It uh, does a better job than just going with a hand rake, that's for sure. Now I put the level on the 2x4 and just go along every every few feet. I want to slope about a half a bubble, so I'm sloping towards the road. So the, the walkway won't pool up with water. So there's a the compactor I bought at the hardware store. It's about a 30 pound compactor. It wasn't a lot of money. It's pretty cheap actually. And if you don't mind the manual labor it's not long it does a good job compacting it doesn't take that long so like I say make sure you water it down to get a lot better compaction so I use this one inch outside diameter PVC pipe plastic pipe like I said it's one inch outside diameter you lay that down then you put your beach sand or really the finest sand you can get over top you screed it with that 2 by 4 lay that 2 by 4 on top of that one inch outside diameter PVC pipe and that'll give you exactly one inch thickness of sand you don't want any more than one inch if you go any more than one inch, you're going to get your pavers sinking in the corners when people walk on them and apply weight on the corner, it'll sink. So you just want that one inch. What that one inch does, it allows uh, to give you a little work room to make sure each paver is perfectly lined up with the next one with a little tap of a rubber hammer or whatnot. It's, it's not too much and it's, uh, it's not too little, it's just right. It helps seat those pavers in good and tight, like I say, no more than one inch. Then after you pick that pipe up, I just kind of fill in the spots a little bit with the leftover sand and I only I only do an eight foot section at a time and then I'll start laying my pavers patio stones uh, I just I don't know I, I find it's better that way and then if you have any trouble you don't uh, you don't have a whole bunch of sand down there you can like I say just do about eight feet at a time and start laying pavers there's the edger I use there it's about uh, one inch one inch one inch thick it's uh, it's called the low pro edging. It uh, you can get the regular, but the low pro is for the patio slabs, which I'm using here. They're only about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. The pavers are four inches thick. 
So if you get the patio slabs, make sure you ask for the low pro. And that way there, when you lay that low pro edging, you won't see it. It'll, it'll be a little bit lower than the pavers, and when you bury it with topsoil, you won't see it. But if you go with the regular, you will see it. You'll see those black edgers on, on the outside edge. So I'm just making sure the walkway is square to the house. I squared off the foundation of the house. Put my line up, my stakes. Measured uh, each corner. And uh, very important when you lay that first layer, those first three uh, stones that I have down there now, very important that you get those bang on because they're the ones that are starting you off. So make sure they're lined up perfectly with that string. You got them good and level right where you want them. You don't want to get four or five stones ahead and then realize you're going off course and it just makes a whole lot of, a lot more work on yourself. So like I say, just make sure, take the extra time to make sure they're good because the rest of it goes pretty fast. Once you get that first row started level, straight, the rest is just bang, 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 one after the other. It don't take long. And each time you lay one down, just give it a smack with that rubber hammer and it uh, helps seat it in that one inch sand. It, uh, you, can, you can level each stone exactly with the one that you just put before that because that one inch gives you that variance to, uh, to line everything up perfectly. And it also, when you compact those stones, it also uh, works that sand up from the bottom and the cracks to help tighten it up. So yeah, every time I lay one, I, uh, I just give it a tap with a hammer like that. And when you lay one of the stones, make sure you put it up against the previous stone and then drop it. Don't drop it on the sand and push it up against the stone because you'll work that stone in between the two or that sand in between the two stones and you won't get a tight fit. So you watch as I'm laying that I'll push it up against the stone and then drop it on the sand. That gives you a tight fit. Yeah, like I say, once you get it to uh, that first row, it's just one after the other. Then if you notice one's maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch higher than the other, one quick snap smack with the hammer, you it's You'd be surprised. It uh, it's actually great to work with that one inch one inch of sand. It, it makes everything makes everything flow and makes everything uh, nice and square and flat. You don't get any pavers higher than the other. Like I say, it gives you that little bit of work room, but it's not too much that when you walk on it, because sand will not compact. It uh, you go you know you go two inches of sand, you're going to have issues. So yeah, we got the walkway all done there. So now I'm just going to square the edges with that 2x4. Just kind of drag it along the sand to make that sand nice and flat for when I put that plastic edging down. And that edging comes, I believe, in 6 foot lengths. It runs around 12 bucks a, a piece, so it's, it's not bad. It's a must when you're doing these walkways, paver walkways. It's a must to have that. That stuff there will keep that tight. It will last for years. And the thing I like about this type of edging, you see how bendable it is. Like you can go, you can build fire pits and a round circle, whatever you want to build. You can, it'll, it'll follow whatever, uh, whatever style of paver you're building. It's great stuff. So I use, uh, I, I cut the video short here, but I'll show you when I do the steps. I, I use 12 inch spikes. I go about every second hole. I pound them down with 12 inch spikes. I'll show you here while I'm doing the steps. So. Again, I just use the PVC pipe, one inch, put a layer of sand down, drop the stones on, give them a tap, the rubber hammer, set them in nice and tight. Now I'm placing this edging. I cut a piece off to make it for the length of those uh, three feet. Uh, driving the 12 inch spikes down. People say, why don't you use galvanized spikes? Well, I use the steel spikes because this, you, want this, you want the spikes to rust because you ever seen a rusty nail, they get all jagged, sharp. They, they take a lot better bite in the ground. They will last a lot longer and they will stay tight. Uh, whenever I'm doing the walkway, this is a three foot walkway, each stone's a foot. So I make sure I go four feet, gives me a half inch on each side to lay those edging. And then you don't have your edging up on the sod and whatnot, trying to, trying to work with that. So Yeah, so we're getting them all nailed down. They were taking a good bite too, it was really good hard ground, I was happy about that. Like I say, they uh, they keep everything nice and tight. Well worth well worth the twelve dollars for for each strip. So I think this walkway was around thirty two feet. You know, just for the sake of cost, I think the total cost was around six hundred bucks to do this whole walkway. Doing it myself, so just for the material. So what I do after, I didn't show in the video, but after I get the, after you always put your edging down, nail it down, then you can put your sand on top of your, your pavers, 
spread it out with the broom, get it swept into the cracks, what you can. Then you tamp it. That tamper helps vibrate that sand down in the cracks even tighter and spread out towards that edging. Those pavers will lock tight in that edging. You can walk on those pavers. You won't hear any rattling. Nothing's going to be loose. Just keep sweeping it. Do it three or four times. Pack it. Sweep it. It will. Uh, you'll be surprised. It'll be singing tight. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you uh, you got some tips out of it. You'll be able to do this, do this stuff yourself at home and save yourself some money. Okay, thanks again for watching.